Good morning and welcome to Worship with Aldersgate. It is so good to see you tuning in and see all of you here in the room on our first 10.30 a.m. service of the fall. We've moved back to 10.30 for the school year and I don't know about you but in the band, but I feel very refreshed and relaxed. It felt like we had extra time today. Uh, we're so glad that you're joining with us in worship wherever you are and whenever you're watching. Uh, we are bound together as a family by the Holy Spirit. This morning, uh, we are having a special blessing of the backpacks for all students of any age, anyone who carries a backpack most of the time. Um, so if you're at home, you can go get your backpack because we're going to pray over your backpack there and for those in the room as well. And that's actually for people of any age, any age. So don't say, I'm not going forward because I'm not little. Anyone who carries a backpack, come on up because I've got something for you during the children's time. This morning, uh, if you have prayer requests, I'm asking you to drop those in the Facebook comments, whether you're in the room or at home, and we'll combine those into a pastoral prayer at the end of the service. And to begin the service today, I have a question of the day, a back-to-school question of the day. Now or in the past, did you get a new pair of shoes for the start of the school year? Who got a new pair of shoes? All right. Bring those to mind. I saw lots of hands. Bring those to mind, those new pairs of shoes, and we'll start there when we get to the message time. All right, Johnny, over right. to you. Thank you. Good morning, Pastor Rachel, and good morning, everyone. It's great to see everyone here and out in Zoom land and Facebook land. Let's all stand and join in singing the opening hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. If you're just joining in, 
the question of the day today, did you get a new pair of schools for the school year, either now or in the past? Shoes, shoes, you know I'm here. I'm distracted because I moved my camera because I would like all the children to come forward and all the students to come forward. Anyone who carries a backpack most days of the week, no matter how old you are, will you come up and join me here? And so many people brought backpacks. I'm so happy. You got one too? Yay, yeah, change. You forgot it. Oh. Look at all these backpacks. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. excited for your new school year? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, even Fia's got a backpack? That's awesome. I love how backpacks come in all sizes. Like when you're in preschool, you have the little one that holds your water bottle and your snack. And then you go to kindergarten, maybe a little bit bigger. And by the time you get to middle school, you have things that can support like 60 pounds. <laughs> right? Yeah, they really grow in size. And then you go to college and all you have is a computer. It gets very small again. Yeah. So I was thinking about the start of the new school year, and um, I always thought it was an exciting time, a little bit nervous, a little bit nervous, a little excited, especially if you leveled up into a new school this year. It can, be, uh, it can make you feel nervous, but also a little excited. And I was thinking about, ooh, we have some more friends coming with backpacks. Stretch, stretch. We're going to make it go slower. They can come right on down. Usher them right forward. Quick, 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 we just started. Come on in. We just started. Come on down with your backpacks. Yes, yes, as fast as you want. Don't crash into the camera. All right. Thank you. We're talking about how being um, at the beginning of a new school year is exciting, uh, but it also can make you a little nervous, right? Both things together. And that's, that's true of so many new things. When we go to school, we are learning all sorts of important information, aren't we? Say important information. Important information. Uh, you should have heard that. Important information. <laughs> and we also get to see our friends. Say, see our friends. Yes. Yeah. And then those are both things, the information that we're learning and the friendships that we have. At the start of the school year, it sort of reminds me of like a seed like a brand new thing that gets planted into you, into your mind if it's information, into your heart if it's a friend. And those seeds can grow all year and turn into beautiful things, beautiful friendships and beautiful new thoughts about how the world works. And so this morning, this is what I got for you for your backpacks. These are little things that go on your zipper. They're called zipper poles and they're flowers because these flowers started out from a seed, right? And then it took some time and they grew into something beautiful. And I think the new friends you make and the new things you learn are gonna take some time and grow into beautiful things too. And you have that one from last year too. That's awesome, Timmy. So it's gonna be a little chaotic. Uh, maybe I'll pray first. And then we'll let the kids gather around and pick out the very one that they like best because they're all different. And then maybe moms and dads can help put them on your backpack. But when you see these, I want you to remember the thing that's growing in your life, that God's growing in your life, the new friends and the new learning that is taking root and growing into something beautiful. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the start of a new school year. If we're nervous, God, we ask that you would go with us and comfort us. Help us to be good friends so that we can grow those new friendships Help our brains and our minds to be open to receive new facts and information to learn about this beautiful world you've created. Bless these students. Keep them safe. Bless their teachers, the administration, and parents. God, and for the children at home, Lord, give them a special blessing and remember that those beautiful seeds are planted in their lives as well. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you are at home and you want one of these, you just tell me. You just put, say the word and I will save some for you. Okay, everybody want to get the one you like? Go for it. Yeah, you can pick it out. You pick the one you like. So today there is a Sunday school. You guys are having frog milkshakes. I don't even know what that means, frog milkshakes. Sounds kind of questionable, Miss Elaine but I'm sure it'll be wonderful. And also, Miss Becca is in the nursery. Did everyone get one? Yeah? Did you get one again? 
Okay, good. Everyone got one. All right, everybody, Sunday school or uh, nursery, or you can stay in here and listen to my wonderful sermon about new, school, new shoes for the school year. <laughs> new shoes. Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Michael Reed. I am uh, my wife and I, uh, my wife Lane and I attend here. I'm also one of the parents with toddler time. So if you've got a toddler or a young uh, child in your life, come hang out with us uh, before church. I'm also uh, reading two uh, passages from Scripture this morning. The first is from the Book of Exodus, and the second is from the Gospel of Luke. Hear now the word of the Lord. Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. Do not want to have anything your neighbor owns. Do not want to have your neighbor's house, wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey. And a second reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 15. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them all, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of their possessions. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Michael. All right, the countdown has begun, friends. This is the second last week with these kind of cameras. The new cameras are being installed after church next Sunday. Woo! <laughs> I seriously will be so glad to that. For people at home, I move my phone around so that we can be broadcast, and I am really ready to be done with that. So uh, just an announcement on that. All right, the question of the day. Did you get new uh, shoes at the beginning of the school year? Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we're so grateful to be here together. What a gift this community is to us, that it can extend from this room out into the places where our community resides, where they are traveling, that we can all be together this way. God, I thank you for this building, this place that has been so busy these last few days. I thank you for the new signs of life returning to um, what we remember a little more. God, I ask that you'd be with me as I speak this morning, that you would order my thoughts and allow my words to be clear. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so you've got, now we have um, mainly adults in the room. We have some uh, high schoolers. What were the new shoes that you got at the start of the school year? Which ones? Do you remember a particular pair that made you super proud? Penny loafers. Penny loafers. There's one Linda showing her age. <laughs> Saddle Oxfords. Okay, we're going, okay. How about something a little bit more modern? You gotta help me guys, please. Anything from Payless. Anything from pay? <laughs> Anything from Payless? I'm serious. Uh, running shoes. Oh, for sports. Hmm? New, Balance New Balance running shoes. Yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know. During like when I was in high school, I never got them because my mom would not even hear of paying this much money. But like Air Jordans were like huge, you know. And then right, and then Doc Martens, really the big. Reeboks with the little pump. On the it. Reeboks with the pump. You remember those? These were like this was the time of year. If you were going to get a really nice pair of shoes, this is when your parents would probably go for it, right? Unless it was my mom. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, I can do that. I can just stand up here and say things like that and suffer later. <laughs> yes, the, this, is, this is the time of year that you can get those shoes. And, 
you may resonate with this line of thought. I think that you could empathize with this line of thought. Imagine yourself at the beginning of a new school year, and you say to yourself, you know, this year is my year, self. This is the year I'm going to get off on the right foot. I'm going to hang out with the right kids. My grades are going to be great. Everything's going to go my way. I just know it can happen. Maybe you're starting a new school or something like that. This can happen for me. And part of my plan as a person with a elementary school or teenage mind is that if I have the right shoes and the right clothes, I am definitely more geared towards success. And so you say, Mom, there's these shoes that I got to get and, and because all the cool kids and all the people I admire and the movie stars and the music stars, these are the shoes they wear. And you research them, you study, you look for a price, you, you could try to maybe, there's not on sale. I mean, good luck. <laughs> this is when they mark them up. But you get, you get your funds together. Maybe mom said you have to help contribute. And you get those beautiful shoes and you put them on your feet and you're kind of in front of the mirror, you know? Those are great. Like posing. I look good. <laughs> I'm definitely poised for success this year. It's going to be great. And then you walk into the new school building, shoes squeaking, maybe a little because they're so new, right? Walk into there, and that amazing person, that amazing human who you've always admired, they are the picture of self-confidence. You look at them, and you look at their shoes, and they are not the shoes you are wearing. Oh, no. In fact, you look over there at a different part of the playground, and the shoes you're wearing are on the feet of the kid that you want nothing to do with. That whole crowd is not you. You don't want to... Oh, my gosh. You have made a fatal misstep. This is not good. Your whole year, that beautiful vision of that wonderful year comes crashing down, right? And you're like, oh, oh, no. I have the wrong shoes. I hate these shoes. I can't stand these shoes. You're like covering up the shoes, right? These are all wrong. You're with me. Something similar has happened to you. Take the metaphor. Okay, they're all wrong. They're all wrong. And so you think, what am I going to do? I have to fix this. These are no good. I, I, I'm going to say, um, even though they fitted them very carefully, they pinch my feet. I must return them immediately. These are terribly uncomfortable shoes. Mom, you're imagining yourself say, I just can't wear them. I hurt my feet hurt all day. We have to return them. And then you think, she's not going to buy that because she was there when they fit the shoes and they said they were fine. Maybe I can come up with the money. I'll get it somehow. I, I don't really have a job right now, but my older brother has a job and he keeps cash in the top drawer of his dresser. And maybe if I just take $5 at a time, he won't really notice <laughs> and I'll be able to get the shoes that I must have because these shoes are awful. You relate to that on any level? where you had something that was really, really great, and then the minute you saw what somebody else had, what you had was terrible. Huge sigh from over here. That must have been an amen. That was the Holy Spirit sigh. Yes. Okay, thank you. I appreciate the feedback. Yeah, and now it is just no good. It is no good. You have been there. This morning we're talking about the spiritual principle of coveting, or specifically not coveting, being dissatisfied with what you have because you look at what someone else has. We all want to live a good life. We want to live a right life. We want to live a happy life, and we want to know that we are ordering our life in a way that makes ourselves proud, our families proud, and most of all, that honors God. All of us want to do that. This is an age-old question. And so someone came to Jesus one time and said, how do I live a good life? What's the most important thing that I can do? And Jesus says, and specifically he says, tell me the most important commandment in our religion to follow. And Jesus said, I can boil those commandments all down to one phrase for you. All of them come down to this. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. It's so simple. It's beautiful. We love it, right? All the law hangs on these, these ideas. That's great. And we can apply that in a lot of situations. And um, 
it's good to expand it just a little bit. So this fall, uh, Dee Kaimak, our certified lay minister, and I sat down and designed a series to talk about some of those commandments, uh, to expand this idea of loving God and loving neighbor just a little. And we thought, let's go on a series for the Ten Commandments. Let's study them all. And we can look at the Old Testament teaching and then apply, look at how Jesus applied that principle in his own teaching. So all fall we're going to be doing this just to mix it up because we're kind of crazy and fun. We decided to do them backwards. What? So that's why we're starting with the 10th commandment, the 10th commandment this morning, um, do not covet. Dee is going to preach three of the sermons uh, during this series. Uh, she, we remember that she's uh, learning to be a stellar preacher, and she does that by practice, so she'll be in the middle of this too. All right, so do not covet. In some ways, this is the original sin, right? You've got the Garden of Eden in your head now from Sunday school. Those beautiful children are learning these, these important foundational stories, Garden of Eden, perfect. God gives the two earthlings, Adam to Eve, everything they could possibly want, and then he says, eat of every tree in the garden, but do not eat of this one, right? Do not eat of this one. And immediately, what do Adam and Eve do? Wait, that one? You've given me all this. This is so wonderful. I have a complete balanced diet of all these beautiful trees and everything's perfect, but I can't have that one. But I want that one. I mean, that one's so interesting, so compelling. And all the focus shifts to what they don't have to what they don't have. And this wanting the thing that they don't have turns into them stealing, taking something from God that God has not given them, right? They take that fruit, and then they start to lie about it and lie about each other. So that coveting, that wishing they had what somebody else, well, it was, <laughs> there was nobody else according to the story, but wishing they had what they could not have resulted in other sin coming from it, the stealing, and the lying. So it is, in some senses, the original sin. We see that it gets encoded into the Ten Commandments later with Moses um, when he says, do not want to have anything your neighbor owns, right? He speaks that in Exodus, and then later Jesus expands on this principle. So when they, in the uh, scripture lesson that Michael read to us, uh, a man uh, speaks to Jesus and asks him a question, and the upshot of the answer, Jesus says, he asks him to divide his estate. The two brothers, right, and the young, we think this is the younger brother, says, divide my estate. I want my money. I want what my brother has, right? Because right now it belongs to the dad. Jesus said, I'm not going to judge between that. And then the important point is, life does not come from your possessions, no, no matter how rich you may be. Life does not come from your possessions. And then he goes on to tell this parable. He tells a story about a man who's already fairly wealthy. He has a great, a great amount of land. He's a farmer, and he has good crops. And um, I'm, I'm going to expand it out, build it out a little bit from what Jesus said. Good crops, let's say he's a good marriage. He's great children. They're beautiful. They're growing, right? He's healthy. They're able to travel a little bit, go see family, see beautiful scenery, all the things we want, right? He has a good life. And then he looks out and he realizes that a large part of the land that he has is still undeveloped. And he thinks, you know, that guy over there developed all of his land. And his wife is more beautiful than mine because of her beautiful clothes. And his children are more fabulous than mine because of their wonderful education. And his vacations are better than mine. Hey, just a minute. I could develop my land. If I just put a little bit more time and energy into developing this land, I also could have more. But the first thing I'm going to need, he says, if I'm going to develop this land, I'm going to need bigger barns because my barns are already overflowing. I mean, I have plenty, but I could have more. And so he sets out to build bigger barns. 
He designs them. He spends time on them. He has to hire them. He has to do a lot of the work himself. He has to wait for all the supplies to go to Djibouti. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin's having supply chain issues at work right now. Right? He has to get all the supplies in, and it becomes this huge project. And now, instead of being home in the evening with his family at the end of the day and visiting with his children and you know caring for that relationship with his wife and, I don't know, just resting and making music, maybe, doing something nice, he's consumed by this project of building barns. And he knows it's going to be worth it. He knows it's gonna, he's going to make his family wealthy. It's going to make him great in his society. And so he throws himself into it. And his family misses him. And he's short with his children. He's short with his wife. And he's exhausted at the end of the day. And when he prays first thing in the morning and when he prays the last thing at night, his prayers have shifted from thank you, God, for my wife, my family, my land, my health, to God, if you would just allow the workmen to please complete the work because it's the weather's changing. It's got to happen. God, 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 help, help, help. Change from prayers of gratitude to prayers of dissatisfaction and desperation. And then Jesus says that this man, as happens too frequently in life, dies suddenly. His wife, was, his life was taken from him before the project was complete. And so the last number of months of this man's life has been dominated by stress and dissatisfaction, broken relationships. The prayers even that he prayed to God were not one of thankfulness, but one of please help, I'm desperate. When we think about planning and wanting to do better and wanting to work harder and wanting to have more, this actually to us, if you're not just on autopilot right now listening to me, this actually sounds like a good thing, right? Isn't this what we Americans do, right? Is seek to better ourselves, is seek to improve our situation. Isn't, what the, isn't that what's wonderful about this country? That we could work really hard, we could plan, and we could lift ourselves up economically. Isn't this a good thing? Yes, it's a good thing, but what Jesus wants us to look at is our motivation, our intention for this. When you say to yourself, I want to do better, right? I want to have a better job. I want to earn more money, right? This is a perfectly natural human thing to want to do. Jesus is asking us to examine our motive on it. What posture do we have as we are making that plan? Are we saying, you know, I think I'm really fascinated by astronomy, and I want to go uh, someday and do something like the James Webb Telescope. If you all see those pictures... That's amazing, right? I want to go do that, and I'm good at math, and, you know, I love looking at the sky, and so I'm going to improve myself, and I'm going to work in that field, and I'm going to make the world a better place somehow. And yeah, hopefully it pays money, and, and it could support my family. Like, that would be wonderful. But I want to develop this God-given ability that I have in a way that makes the world a better place and can provide for my family. That's why I, I'm motivated to make this plan, to get this career or this better job. And I see what God's given me already, and I'm, I'm so thankful. Like, that's great. Thank you, Lord, for providing. But I think I can go further with this. I think I can do better things. That's a healthy motivation because there's gratitude there for, for what exists, and there's a recognition of, of um, a joyful development of gifts and a joyful expansion of abilities, right, that would make the world better. You could have the very same goal, the very same goal, and instead be motivated by, I want that title. If I have that title, then finally my mother-in-law will respect me. <laughs> it didn't work, by the way. But anyway, <laughs> teasing, teasing. Um, right? If I have that title, then people will really, I mean, then they'll know they're around someone important, and then I'll be able to get rid of this crappy car that I'm very embarrassed to drive around. They didn't drive in Jesus' day. No, well, anyway, but this crappy car, and I could get this great house, you know, and go on that fab vacation, and everyone will be so impressed, right? Because what I have right now, it's kind of embarrassing, to be honest, and we've got to put this behind us as soon as we can and get to be where we belong, where we deserve to be. 
the very same goal with a very different motivation. The second example lacks gratitude. It lacks joy. It lacks presence. The ability just to be present in this moment and say thank you, God, for what I have. Because we don't know how long we have. Shouldn't every day, every day be filled with that gratitude for what we do have just now in this moment? Gratitude or greed? Desire, dissatisfaction. What motivates you to make your plans and make your goals? From the very beginning, from the stories of Eden to the Tenth Commandment to the teachings of Jesus, we're instructed absolutely make your plans. Actually, the scripture lesson last week that Pastor Rick preached on was about making plans well. Make your plans. But watch your motivations. Invest in cultivating that gratitude. When Jesus said life does not come from possessions, no matter how rich we may be, you could take the word life out and say joy does not come from possessions, no matter how rich. Contentment does not come from possessions, no matter how rich. That joy, that contentment is accessible to you today if you tap into gratitude for what you have, even as you make your plans for the future. Amen. So as Pastor Rachel mentioned, there will be a series on the Ten Commandments. And after every sermon in the series, we're going to sing just a responsorial uh, text to the tune of the, dox the, the doxology that matches the commandments. So please stand and join in singing with that. remain standing and singing our uh, next hymn, Trust and Obey. Oh, sorry, Teach Me, O Lord. Thank you. Out of order.
may be seated. Danny, I love that. So is there, is that doxology thing, like, does it do every commandment? Yes, it does. Wow. Yes. It's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's great. Thank you for finding that. All right. I appreciate the partnership. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Um, oh, <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? So uh, now we uh, have a time of offering. If you're here in the building, there's an offering played out in the foyer. Uh, there's QR code you can use with your smartphone. And then on Facebook, there's a link in the comments. We really appreciate your financial gifts to this ministry. Uh, they encourage us and keep us moving along. Two announcements for you this morning. Um, the first one is that the Wednesday noon Zoom Bible study... It's from noon to 1 o'clock exactly on Wednesdays for people who work, need to get off at 1. Um, we are starting a new book this Wednesday. It is Adam Hamilton's Seeing Gray in a World of Black and White. Uh, so you have a little time if you'd like to get that book, our first meeting this Wednesday. And uh, please let me know. The link is in the church email. It's embedded in there in the calendar. But if you want to be included on the email announcements for it, um, I can do that if you let me know that you would like to join. Also today after church, um, after we meet each other and talk to each other. Oh, wait. You know what? Back in the old times, BC, before COVID, we um, had... <laughs> I just made that up right now. I did. Thank you. Um, we had something called a two-minute rule, and that was that for the first two minutes after the service ends, you should go talk to someone you don't know, don't know their name. It's the time that you don't have to be embarrassed to say, hi, I don't know your name. I don't remember your name. You can say that. You're allowed. We all have brain fog. So let's do the two-minute rule today. Talk to somebody you haven't uh, remembered their name yet. Um, you need to be reminded. And then after that, uh, for those who can, uh, we're going to stack the chairs uh, eight high and get ready to move them out so that North Reading Youth Cheer can practice here during the week. All right. For celebration and thanks. Oh, what? Okay. Yes. Actually, well, I'm going to go ahead and thank Johnny because I really appreciate that um, the, the research you did finding music that fits our sermon series. I've actually never experienced that before, Johnny. So thank you very, very much. <laughs> That was really creative. Um, we should also celebrate the over 20 breakfast volunteers that served yesterday. Our breakfast had 75 people attend, which is pretty great after two and a, year, two and a half year uh, hiatus. So let's uh, give all the volunteers a celebration as well. That will be continuing on the second Saturday of each month. All right. Thank you for sending in your prayer requests during the service and uh, prior to the service. Let's be in an attitude of prayer. God, we thank you again for this community, for these people, for this place where we can gather. We thank you for our health and for our faith and for time to spend with you reconnecting and remembering who we are and to whom we belong. God, you know all the prayers that exist in our community, so I lift to you first prayers that are unspoken, um, asking for these and for the others, God, that um, you would allow us to be perceptive to how you're moving in the world in response to our prayers. Lord God, among the concerns we have this morning are for those who are struggling with or in recovery from addiction and for those with mental illness, depression, and anxiety. God, we ask that you would bring health both physical and spiritual and mental, God, and just um, preserve life and bring healing. We pray for those experiencing seasons of grief. For a 25-year-old uh, Liam, a friend of the Costantino family who's in a coma after a head injury, we ask for healing. God, we uh, pray for Dee Kymock's friend Denise as she recovers from kidney failures and for Jan Wise's friend Kellyanne with health issues. We pray for Jan Condry and George Dow, who are recovering from COVID, and for Jim Morris, a friend of Bobby Pierce and Kathleen Epstein's, who's in a coma after surgery. God, we do remember uh, today on September 11th, 21 years ago, all the lives that were lost uh, during the morning time. Um, we thank you for the celebrations that have gone on here in North Reading and in other places remembering that terrible day, God, and we ask that you would continue to comfort and heal and bring restoration. 
God, we celebrate so many things, uh, including the return of football. And we ask that you would bless the athletes. I'll include a return of marching band in there, God, as well. All the fall sports and activities, we ask that you bless the children and the adults who participate in these. We celebrate uh, the volunteers for the free-for-all breakfast. And especially this morning, God, uh, along with the rest of the world, we celebrate the life and example of Queen Elizabeth II and the incredible example of leadership that she gave, uh, the steadiness and the character that she showed. Uh, thank you for her leadership. God, you've heard our prayers. Now we ask that you would hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for being here this morning. God bless you. And let's sing our way out. All right. Let's all stand and join as you're able uh, with our last hymn, Trust and Obey. Thank you. 